All right, we're in the airway and breathing course, and now we're going to talk about more stuff about endotracheal tubes. We already talked about how to select and prepare and bougies and stylets, and now we're talking about the ET tube placement and confirmation of placement. <clears throat> so when you're inserting the tube, you don't want to block your view of the cords. You want to be able to see the cords and see the tube and then see the tube go through the cords. If you're just uh, unable to see anything but the tube, then you're not really sure if you're in or not. So we like you to go in on the right side of the mouth and get that tube low and out of your view. You don't need to be looking at the tube, you need to be looking at the cords. But you need to see that tube pass through the cords. You want the cuff just past the cords. Just past the cords. Now, not just barely past the cords where it may slip out, but you also don't want to sit there and feed it in there forever um, to where you have it too far. So we want the tube between the cords and the carina past the cords uh, by just a little bit. Most ET tubes have a black mark just above the cuff. That works really nice. <clears throat> and so in terms of technique, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't matter. We're all going to hold the rungiscope on our left hand. We're all going to throw tubes with our right hand. So place your ET tube with your right hand and then clamp that right hand to the face. Don't move. Hold on to that tube. Hold on to that face. Never let go of your ET tube until it's secured. You've worked hard to get this tube. You've, you've practiced hard. You've worked hard. You've scored. You've got the tube. Now let's don't let it move. Let's get it secured. So what happens when you place the tube in too deeply? Well, if you think back to anatomy several lessons back, that right main stem bronchus comes off the trachea at the carina, and the right main stem bronchus is a pretty gentle angle, kind of like an exit off of the highway. Whereas the left main is pretty much a slow down hard left kind of thing, it's pretty hard to put a tube down the left main. It's pretty easy to put one down the right main. If you push it in too deeply, it may go down that right side. So we want it just past the cords, well above the carina. Inflate the cuff with 10 cc's of air unless it gets hard to push before that. 10 cc's is a starter dose. You may need a little bit more. You probably will be just fine with 10. But if you get to 5 or 6 and you're pushing, then let up. Don't, don't continue to force it. Inflate and remove and keep the syringe. Remove that syringe, otherwise the force inside will push the plunger back and deflate the cuff. And so remove that syringe, but hang on to it. Don't spike it, don't toss it, um, keep it because you may need to move that tube um, and reposition it with, with the cuff deflated. So you're gonna need that syringe. So your sequence is place the tube and clamp it, pull the bougie or stylet with your left hand, call for the bag while you're inflating, and then remove that syringe and keep it. Use both hands to get that syringe off there. Don't be slowed down by trying to do it one-handed. Don't pull it off. Twist it off and use both hands. And you'll practice this in the lab setting and you'll really um, get pretty good at it because we'll stay on you until you get good at it. And then we talk about look for two, listen for three, feel for four. We want you to look for two things. The only two things that matter. Chest rise and waveform. If you've got chest rise and waveform, you're in the trachea. That's it. End of story. No other possibility. If you don't have chest rise, you don't have waveform, you're not in. You may have thought you were in. You thought you saw it go through, but it's not through the cords. And then we're going to start looking at confirmation. Now, <clears throat> you need to see that tube go into place just past the cords, and you want to use capnography. Capnography doesn't lie. If there's a waveform, it's in the trachea. Your stethoscope's got nothing to do with deciding if you're in or out of the trachea. The stethoscope is for fine-tuning where you are within the trachea. So don't be in a hurry to get that stethoscope down there. Let's get a good look at waveform, a good look at chest rise. Now, kind of back up to the second bullet point there on the slide. We want you to see the ET tube go into place. But when you're using a bougie with a grade three, it's because you can't see the cords. You can still try to pass the tube because you can feel where you are with the bougie. That's cool. No problem with that. But you're just not going to actually see it go through the cord. So grade one, grade two, you see it, you place it, 
you pull the bougie, inflate the syringe, bag your patient, look for waveform, look for chest rise, everything's good. With the bougie, you do the same thing. You see a grade three, you're like, oh, I'm glad I got a bougie, not a stylet. You place the tube, pull the bougie, and then uh, the, the confirmation piece um, becomes even more important because you didn't actually see it go through the cords. You have to rely on capnography and, wave, and um, chest rise. So you're going to place that cuff just past the cords. Use the black line as a guide. Hold it tightly. Don't give it up. Confirm that placement using capnography and then tie it down. And then we'll come back and adjust if we need to after we listen. We're going to secure that tube with a commercial tube holder if you've got to. I love that twill tie thing, but some services won't let you use something that's homemade. Uh, and then get your collar on after you've tied that tube. Now remember to put that collar over your tube tie. Don't tie your tube over the collar because if somebody has to move that collar, then they got to move your tube tie. So tie your tube and then put the collar over the top of it. We're talking about depth of insertion now. This is really for documentation and to see if it's moved. Because you placed it where you want it and you held it still. And now we're just going to kind of document uh, where it is. And so use your teeth as a benchmark. If they don't have teeth, use the gum line, the alveolar ridge, it's called technically. Generally, the ET tube should be inserted to a depth that's three times its size, as long as you pick the right size tube. Now, <clears throat> maybe you have a patient with strider or some other airway swelling. You're going to use a smaller tube than normal. Um, and so now, you know, your multiplication thing doesn't work so well. In most adults, we're in the 20 to 22 at the teeth range. And then in kids, that three times the size um, is pretty much what we're looking for. This The only time that really comes into play when you're placing the tube, the depth of insertion comes into play when you're placing the tube, is when you're using a bougie. So the bougie, you place the bougie, you felt with the bougie, you're like, okay, I got rings, I got carina, I'm, I'm in. I'm definitely in the trachea. You thread the tube in over the bougie, well, how deep do you go? Because you can't see the cuff and the cords, so you have to go with this sort of depth thing. And so generally three times uh, the, the size of the tube is a, is a good thing there. So again, some of this is probably a little confusing as you sit here you know, in front of a computer or wherever you're at, uh, listen to this, but it really becomes more clear once we get in the lab. So again, here's the sequence. Place the tube, clamp it with your right hand. Pull the bougie with your left hand and call for bag while you're pulling it. Inflate the cuff and remove that syringe. Use two hands for that. Keep the syringe. Look for two. Chest rise and waveform as you ventilate. You should see chest rise and a waveform should pop up. You have a waveform, you're in the trachea. Secure it, note the depth, and then we're going to auscultate, evaluate the depth, adjust it if we need to, but that's the general sequence. When we auscultate, when we listen with the stethoscope, we'll listen with the belly first, then over the right main, then over the left main. Look at your ET tube depth and think about this. And then decide what you're going to do and act. So what do I mean about think about this? Well, just because you don't have lung sounds on the left side doesn't mean you're down the right main. I'll say it again. If you place the tube and you ventilate, and you've got chest rise, you've got waveform, and then you finally go listen, and you listen over the right and you hear lung sounds, you listen over the left and you don't hear lung sounds, the novice airway operator, the paramedic student, wants to jump to the conclusion, oh my, it must be down the right main. Despite the fact that I placed it, I watched it, I've got chest rise and waveform, and I'm like, oh, it's got to be down the right main. Look at your depth. If your depth is about what you would predict, you're not down the right main. If you look down at the patient's mouth, and you can barely see any tube sticking out of his mouth, okay, maybe you're in too deep. I don't know why you did that, but maybe you're in too deep. But in a, a normally placed tube, you're not going to be in too deep. There could be something wrong with the left lung, a pneumo or pneumonia, or it's there isn't one. It's been surgically removed. I mean, there's Lots of things that can go on. So um, this may be a little bit ahead of the game, especially if you're, if you're doing this course before you've had much lab practice. You're, this is all kind of becoming mush. Um, but it's real good review. 
that the auscultation is for fine tuning where you are within the trachea and just because you don't hear sounds doesn't mean the tubes in the wrong place rule out the other stuff so this is really really important I preached about it way too much probably but no I haven't not not enough yet auscultation helps you decide where you are within the trachea it's not to see if you're in or out waveform Capnography tells you if you're in or out. If you saw it go through, you should know if it moved since you placed it. 